my today's topic as we all know is flutter render engine behind the scenes so we all are flutter developers of course we all are and we all like to develop good qualities and nice applications in flutter which we use a single code base to render our application on web mobile okay right now let's ta target this to factors over here and in mobile uh, let's say android ios so here we have been rendering our flutter applications from start from day one and it's really cool it's really awesome it's fast but then how flutter actually does this how flutter actually renders this application on the screen this is my topic for the day and i will guide you frankly this is an advanced topic and i've tried my level best to reduce the uh, theory part and to make it easier for to fit this topic in a 20 minutes time slot given by geeky ans to me so thankful for that <laughs> and before moving on uh where is my cursor yeah and thanks akansha for this uh, wonderful introduction that you gave about me uh, so again i will start so my name is ashrir de bhagwat and i am a founder of codemi which is a client based app development company apart from that i am also an organizer for uh, flutter pune and i am a lead mentor and video course creator at raybindalik.com raybindalik is the company which has flutter apprentice book if you guys don't know which was endorsed by google itself so i was one of the tes in there so we create books and uh, video courses for different mobile tech companies and mobile courses that we have apart from that i'm also a pm and flutter team lead at abacus.co which is a australian pos company and in my free time i try my best to devote to community and create youtube videos and be a public speaker at events like this and also provide corporate flutter trainings and other app development trainings and on the right side you can see i have my social shares uh, shri bhagwat 94 on uh, twitter and everywhere else and on my youtube channel is codemi you can please please subscribe because i need them <laughs> and a uh, special thanks to geeky ants for arranging such an awesome event the food was great the speakers are even better and the arrangement is completely good so without taking much time let me start with my topic my today's topic again is how flutter renders the app and just a basic example of the image that i felt is apt for this topic over here now i will break this talk into four theories over here that we have so the theory of everything is the special book of uh, stephen hawkings and i have read that book i like that book so i gave the title over here and i'm breaking that into four theories so the first theory is the layout phase second is the painting phase third is the composition phase and the fourth is the rasterizing phase so these are the four phases and we will break down if you don't understand it's fine when i'll be breaking down these theories it would be easier and at the end we'll also be having a q and a session so i'm always there to explain you and guide you in this here is a small diagram not small complicated one my bad so here is a complicated diagram where flutter tells us how we uh, render everything on the screen and on the top we see we have three trees a uh, widget tree element tree and render object tree on the extreme right we also have the ui which says flutter activity inside that we have a window then we have a flutter view and we also have the flutter surface view and inside the surface view we have widget 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 so that's the ui that you actually see on the screen on the left hand side we have the rendering pipeline now what is a pipeline when things follow one after each other into a set is called a pipeline so the rendering pipeline helps us to see how the flutter renders the application one after each other into a stream or say into a pipeline giving us the final result onto a screen and then we have the gpu and we have the raster compositions this is just a basic example now let's go deep into it so the first phase which i have talked about it is the layout phase now what is layout like you might have heard this layout word let's forget flutter let's come to english part you might have heard this layout keyword or layout word multiple times in your day to day life like you are laying how you are laying things that is called as layout are you guys with me right yeah so when you lay out things on the screen or anywhere that is called as the layout phase so what happens in layout so for example when uh, geekyan decided to create a event over here they first thought how we will lay out this space 
Okay, so here will be the stage, here will be the screens, we will have the chairs aligned like this, here will be the mic, the camera, everything. So they decided a place and the size of each and everything over here, right? So that's what Flutter does. When we create widgets, Flutter first layouts the space for each and every widget. So for in the, from, sorry, in the entire screen, where each widget will go, the size and the constraints that are laid out beforehand. So the parent child passes down the constraints. Constraint is the maximum space. So who has arranged this, they will say, okay, the stage should be of three feet, not more than that. And in width, it should be of eight feet, not more than that. And then they have given the speaker, the camera of three, three feet. So no matter the stage is so big, but me over here, I just have the option to move from this side to this side. So this is the parent child, this is the parent widget, and I'm the child widget of this parent stage. So I gave another sizes to my parent widget, which told the parent widget that, okay, we have this much space available, but this child can move only from this side to this side. So now my remaining space can be utilized for some other widgets or let's say for some other layouts. This is how layouts work. In single sentence, let's say constraint come down from parent to child and sizes go up from child to parent. Understood? Constraints niche aate, size upar jata hai. Simple. Take <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then the painting phase, we go to the painting phase. And this is the world famous painting. We all know that we have been seeing a lot over here. <laughs> yes. The, this painting is very famous and that's how Flutter renders. <laughs> you can see. So <laughs> Flutter provides uh, uh, <laughs> Flutter provides the canvas to the widgets and on that widget, on the canvas, the widget can draw itself, okay? So each widget has its own canvas and what provides that canvas? The painting phase provides the canvas to the widget which can paint separately, okay? So each widget has its own canvas, okay? Each widget has its own canvas and also each widget can lay out a canvas to its child to create its own painting. Got it? So let's say there is that left hand side small cluster of paint that will be painted separately. The horse and the donkey will be painted separately and that's how everything is created. And every widget creates a new layer and that is painted on top of each other. I hope clear till here, right? And then we come into a composition phase. So here's another example. We all like to listen to music, right? Uh, if you'll break down a music, we have the vocalist, then we also have players who are playing guitar at the background, then we have a drummer, and then we have multiple uh, sounds that we need. We also have uh, folky sounds that are the basic minor sounds, and then everything, a composer, collects all those sounds and he mixes and merges them together to create a music and to create a song out of it, right? So each and every component is separate, but when we listen to them, it feels like it is running in a harmony, right? So this is what is happening over here. Flutter also takes the separate widget separately, arranges them with according to the layout phase, which we have given them the sizes and everything, and then it creates a great cluster together joining them one after the other how we need it. So where you can see, I have given an image of a Lego. Why? Because we can actually join, we can actually see each widget kind of a block of a Lego and then we can just uh, align it how we want or lay out it how we want, right? And after that, after the composition phase, we fall off into the rasterizing phase. And now what rasterizing phase does is it creates a raster image of the compositions. So whatever compositions we had, it created a raster image and then that raster image is sent to our Flutter engine. Then Flutter engine what it does, it submits that to the GPU and then the GPU renders that in front of your screen. And that rendering part is usually done by 60 hertz per second, right? And it is done in pixels. 
So each pixel knows what it has to print or what it has to render and that everything is handled by the GPU part. Now what actually Flutter renders? This is the main question like what Flutter renders on screen? Any guesses, any answers? Widgets. Why? Because everything is a widget. Guys, I tackled that. <laughs> everything is a widget in Flutter. So, <laughs> Flutter renders widgets on screen. Before going deep, let me just brush you up what actually, how actually Flutter renders the widget. So, what is a widget? A widget is an immutable description of part of a UI. And when I actually was preparing for this talk and when I read this, it's immutable and I was like, no, I don't like Why? Because when I'm using the application, the UI is constantly changing. The widget, they're constantly changing. Then how I can say they are immutable? But if you see, it says the annotation is saying at immutable. That means the widget, they don't change. Now here was a bit confusion that I was having like, if the UI is changing, then why widgets are not changing, okay? So, let us see how actually widgets change and how the UI gets updated, okay? Now, Flutter has three trees. There is a widget tree, there is an element tree, and there is render object tree. We all know widget tree, right? We are creating widgets one after the uh, other. We have parent widget, we have child widget. That is the widget tree. Then we also have element trees. So when you create a widget, the element of that widget is created, okay? That can be used. So we have the widget, then we also have the element of per widget. And then we have render object tree, which renders those widgets on our screen, okay? So widget tree, element tree, and render object tree. A basic description over here. So what is widget? It describes the configuration of an element. So for example, we have a widget, let's say it's a container or a text. Then if we have, if it's a container, it's a red color container. Now that is the configuration, right? Then if it is text, what text it has, that is the configuration. The size is, what is its width? What is its height? That is the configuration we have. Then what is element? Now, at what, at what point of our life cycle is that widget shown, okay? and its state and its life cycle is managed by that element. So the location where on the screen, at what time, let's say at the start or mid or end of the application and its size and its life cycle of that widget that everything is controlled by the element, okay? Just like widget, we have that elementary by that. And then we have render object. Now what render object does is render object handles the size the layout and the painting. It handles the size, the layout and the painting. And when Flutter draws the UI on the screen, it looks at the render object tree and not at the widget tree. So we might, we might be thinking that the Flutter is looking at the widget tree when it is drawing the widgets. No, it is looking at the render object tree. And this is the diagram which will depict how Flutter looks where? <laughs> 18 plus guys. <laughs> and let me break it down even simpler. So we have a widget, we have element and we have render object. I have taken a text widget at extreme left to me. I have taken a text widget and this text widget will hold the config for a piece of the UI, right? and it has its public API which we access and we communicate with that text widget. Then it goes into the element phase where it creates a text element which denotes our text widget, okay? And it represents an actual piece of UI. It is representing the actual piece of the UI and it holds reference, it holds the references and manages the trees as well. And then it creates the render object that is the render text which actually gets rendered on the screen and that render object has its size, layout, composition, styling, everything, okay? Now, too much theory, let me just break you down a little bit. And when we always start by printing hello world, it is the first thing that we do. So again, over here also I have taken hello world example and I have not taken any material app 
I haven't taken any scaffold, nothing, nothing, just plain run app function. And after run app, I have just called a widget that is rich text and I have passed a text called as hello world, right? And it makes me a hacker man when I create hello world because that is the starting phase of development. And you can see this is how on the right hand side top corner, you can see this is how our hello world is rendered on the screen as there is no scaffold, there is no styling, just a plain white text hello world, okay? And what happens when you call run app function? So when you call run app, if you go inside the run app function, we have widgets flutter binding, which ensured that our application is initialized and our widgets have binded perfectly. And after that, we make sure that the widget that we have passed, in our case, the text widget that we have passed, it is it has attached to the root widget. So that is our root widget that would be shown when the application is running. Okay. So that's why I've highlighted a uh, schedule attached root widget and we are passing the widget from the parenthesis or from the parameters of our function. Again, a basic example over here. What happens is the new word that you have seen here is leaf render object widget. Now, what is a tree and what is a leaf? So tree is the complete structure and when we reach at the end part of the tree we have leaves right root se shuru hota hai leaves pe khatam hota hai barabar biology simple yahan tak to ho na mere sath <laughs> yeah so it starts with root and ends at leaf so when it is your final widget that is rendering it will have leaf render object element if it is the final widget right now we just have a text widget which is the final widget that's why it took leaf render object element, okay? When we are creating this leaf render object element, you can see over here, it calls a create element function, okay? It is calling an create element function, which helps us to create that element, which actually helps us to create that element. And then when that element is created, it mounts that element, and then it creates the render object for that element. So that render object will help you to render that widget on that screen at that location with that composition. Got it? Basic? Okay. So what we'll do is how UI actually changes. We will call run app function twice. I know like some people are thinking how we can call run app function twice. Even I was confused, but yes, we can actually call run app function twice inside our void main function. And when we call a run app function twice, what happens is that it acts like a set state function that is called into our stateful widget. So basically, it just re-renders the widget, but while re-rendering it, it makes sure to reuse the elements and the objects that we already have rendered before and just change the element or the widget which is changing. So the rest of the application remains same, only the thing that is different will change and only that part will re-render, okay? So here, first we have a rich text which says hello world in our void main function. Then again, I called a run app function which has hello Bengaluru and on the screen it is printing hello Bengaluru. Now there is no GIF or anything which will actually uh, explain you how this works but then first the hello world is printed then the hello Bengaluru is printed but it is so fast that you can't see the difference because both the functions are called one after another immediately. But here is what happens when you call run app function twice, it first calls a function called as scan update, which returns a bool value. You can see static bool, the bool is the return type, right? Basic, brace, basic function. And it takes two widgets in its parameters, the old widget and the new widget. Old widget matlab purana widget, which was present already. And new widget, which is the new widget, which will change it or which will takes its place and you can see if the runtime type of both the widget is same 
then it will just update the widget. It won't re-render the widget, okay? But, and we are not using keys over here, so let's ignore the key part. But if the runtime type of the widget is different, then it will re-render the widget. It won't update it. Next slide. Okay, so here is the final explanation of what happens. We have the widget tree again, we have the element tree, we have the render, render object tree. So first we have rich text which says hello world, right? It is the final widget, that's why we have leaf render object element, why? Because it is the final widget, so leaf at the end part. And then the render object creates the render paragraph which will render hello world. Then we call the run, run app function again and that time we passed hello Bangalore over there. So, our can update function was called, which checked if the new widget and old widget are matching the runtime type. It was true. That's why only the text changed, the text replaced. So, the rich text is same. From hello world, it went to hello Bengaluru. And from render paragraph, hello world, it again went to hello Bengaluru. So, you can see, if we have the final widget, we use leaf render object element. And at the bottom, I've also written called as single child render object element. Now, what is single child render object element? Too big, I know. But if your widget has a child, okay, then it won't use leaf render object element. It will use single child render object element. So, over here, we have the center, right? And inside center, we have our text widget. So, we have two widgets. One is center and one is text. So, when our rich text is rendering, it will choose leaf and when the center is rendering, it will choose single child render object. Why? Because it has a child and it has single child. But our applications are made up of multiple children. Like we have rows, we have columns, right? We don't have just a text in center. So at that time, we have multi-child render object element. Rest is same. Everything is same. And you might have Till now, you might have uh, seen multiple errors called as render flex, overflow and all, right? So, this is where this render flex comes from, from your render object. If it is not able to constrain itself into the screen, it will tell you that our widget is overflown by XYZ pixels on left or bottom or top, like anywhere. So, let me just brush you up how things actually happen. And I'm going to use a Pokédex application that I like because anime Pokemon is good. So, first we have the layout phase and on the right hand side we have the Pokemon app that I've actually created and on the left hand side we have the layout phase which actually lay out the application. I've also created an index, I don't know why but I created an index which actually tells which is a scaffold. Uh, on top the yellow is the sliver app bar and I have given it red border because it can change its size. Then we have the Pokédex text in grey, the search box we have below and then we have the grid view in blue and the grid in purple. Then I have also magnified a single grid a cell, single grid cell and then we have the text of the Pokémon, the name of the Pokémon, the type of the Pokémon and the image of the Pokémon. So this is how the layouting phase actually works and the space it has given to the screen and the object is done the layout part is done, the blocking part is done and now it will go and create the painting phase. Now in painting phase, each and every small widget is painted on the screen. So the Pokédex text is printed, printed or it's painted, sorry. Then the search icon is painted, then the search text is painted. If you'll come down, we also have a small slide or small uh, square of our grid view cell which is again painted separately and each everything when it's painted separately it will go into the composition phase and then it will be composed and a layout will be created right it would be arranged and where arranged in such a way that a complete layout will be created and then it will rasterize onto your screen so layout painting composition and rasterization Samja sabko? Yape basic. Final slide, final explanation. When we are using the grid view, you can see we scroll, right? And when we scroll, the grid on the top goes off the screen and new grids come from the bottom. So what happens is when you 
push the cells of the screen, they go into the scrapped view. Okay, there is this thing called as scrapped view, which a place where that view is scrapped. We don't need them. They go into the scrapped view and they are shifted to dirty view. Why dirty view? Because they have some properties which they know and some properties which they don't. So you can't actually use it. Okay. So it is dirty view where you know its layout, you know the basic composition, but you don't know the new data that will be added to the same view. And then those view are recycled and brought down to the waiting view. And in waiting view, they have given the new data. And at this time, again, can update function is called, which checks if the element and the tree and the run type is true. It will just change or update the widget, else it will re-render. But over here, the re-rendering phase won't occur because it's completely a grid view and we are just scrolling from top to bottom. Any questions? And it was a difficult topic. It was advanced topic. I tried my best to <laughs> make it a bit interesting. I hope it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, if any questions, do ask me right now. If later on I'm here available, you can just ask me any questions. And again, uh, special thanks to Geeky Ants for hosting such a beautiful event. And again, here are my socials. If you want, you can follow me on Twitter and Medium and YouTube. Okay, guys, thank you. You have been a great audience.